Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press today and we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on the channel in recent times. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee, whether it's through the Super Thanks option on YouTube, longer term supporters on Patreon and channel members on this channel. YouTube channel. Thank you very much for that support. Now, straight into the news and relations between Spain and another Spanish speaking country, Argentina, have turned sour. Why, I hear you asking? Well, because Argentine President Millet has called Pedro Sanchez's wife corrupt at the international far right convention in Madrid. Vox has managed to gather some 10,000 people this Sunday at the Palacio de Vista Alegre in the Madrid neighborhood of Catalonia. Caravanchel. Aware of the dissonances and cacophonies presented by the chorus of his allies, the leader of Vox, Santiago Abascal, has stressed that they all share the same threat and have to collaborate shoulder to shoulder against the common enemy, socialism. Paradoxically, the big star of the pre-election rally was someone who is not going to the polls. Argentine President Javier Millet welcomed and acclaimed like a rock star by the attendees. Millet lashed out against damned and cancerous socialism. However, he did not limit himself to ideological criticism and blasted President Pedro Sanchez and called his wife Begonia Gomez corrupt. So there we go, the international far-right convention held in Madrid at the weekend and the star of that convention, Javier Millet, the Argentine president. And he didn't hold back, attacking socialism, calling it damned and cancerous, and also lashing out at Prime Minister Sanchez and his wife, calling her corrupt. And as a result of Mr. Malay's words, a diplomatic row has broken out between Spain and Argentina again. And Minister Albades has summoned the Argentine ambassador in Spain and does not rule out breaking off relations if no apology is forthcoming. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Union and Cooperation, José Manuel Albades, has summoned this Monday to the headquarters of the ministry the ambassador of Argentina in Spain, Roberto Bosch, to demand that the Argentine president, Javier Millet, publicly apologize for his words at the Vox rally on Sunday. This is the second diplomatic gesture of the Spanish government after calling the ambassador in Buenos Aires for consultations this Sunday. Alvarez explained in La Hora de la Una on the national broadcaster that exceptionally he will be the one to receive the ambassador at the ministry. So Spain not happy with Mr. Malay's words and at once an apology, and if that apology is not forthcoming, then diplomatic relations between the two countries could be broken off. So we'll see if Spain gets that apology from Mr. Malay or whether Mr. Malay doubles down and says to Spain, Vete al carajo, socialista de mierda. And the final story we'll look at today related to the ongoing story here in Spain, the story that has been dominating press both locally and internationally in recent times about Spain's mass tourism model and how some locals here are fed up with tourism. And one town in Menorca is so fed up with tourists, it has introduced visiting hours. We pay dearly, they say. Binibeca Vel, near the southern tip of the island of Menorca, sees more than 800,000 tourists visiting each year, eager to snap pictures of the quaint town, actually a 19 1960s replica of an authentic fishing village. For residents, this means dealing with noise disruption, intrusive behaviour and rubbish covering the streets. Tourists went into homes, they sat on chairs, they take things, climb on our walls, they have outdoor drinking parties, one resident told news website eldiario.es last month. If this isn't regulated, it will happen every summer. The organisation that represents Binibeca Vell's 195 homeowners does not direct blame tourists, however. Instead, they see it as the fault of authorities who have failed to impose regulations to ensure the well-being of residents. 
Since the beginning of May, it has asked that people only visit between the hours of 11am and 8pm. So, there we go. So fed up are the residents of that town in Menorca that they have introduced visiting hours for people that want to visit it. And what about the figures that were mentioned there? Some 800,000 people visiting that town every year. And again, it is the behaviour of some of these tourists that is the issue. They invade people's privacy, they steal things, and they leave leave rubbish lying around, and the locals, as we saw, have had enough. And here's the village in question, a very picturesque place indeed. Now let's have a look at some comments that have been left on the channel recently. One here from Laura, the minimum salary for the digital nomad visa is around 2300 euros a month, not double or triple our salaries, but it's true that that's a minimum. Many of them make much more. Yeah, Laura, thanks for the comment and thanks for adding to the discussion that we have been having on the channel in recent times about the impact that digital nomads are having on some parts of Spain, not only Spain, but Portugal as well. We saw the other day, a couple of articles in the press about how some digital nomads, and I'll repeat that, some digital nomads are taking the P155. They go into cafes and restaurants with their laptops, sit down, order a coffee, and stay there for a few hours. And the owners of these establishments have had enough and want them out. Because obviously they're taking up space that could be used by a more valuable customer. And in Portugal, residents in Lisbon are complaining that they have been priced out of the rental market by digital nomads. People that come to Portugal with higher salaries have more money to spend and uh, local Portuguese people just can't compete. Because as I mentioned the other day, one of the requirements to get your hands on a digital nomad visa, both here in Spain and in Portugal, is that you have to prove that you're earning a certain amount of money. And in the case of Spain, it is around double the minimum salary. So around €2,400 a month you have to prove that you are making. And as Laura points out, digital Digital nomads will often make a lot more than that. So basically, locals can't compete. One here from George, digital nomads can be a real problem for businesses and customers alike. I go into a plaza and find all the tables occupied by people with laptops. I move on with my wife to the next cafe where I can get a table. It's that simple. They get my euros instead. Yeah, George, thanks for the comment and that's the issue. If you go to a cafe or bar and see that all of the tables are busy with people using their laptops, you move on, you go somewhere else. And the place full of digital nomads misses out on your euros. And that's why they are complaining that digital nomads are ruining their businesses. One here from Baycast. My goodness, do you want a school teacher? Always a school teacher. You are very entertaining. Joking apart, another great show, and I'm disappointed to have missed the meteorite. I presume that's what it was. Yeah, Baycast, thanks for the comment and referring to that fireball that sped over over both Spain and Portugal on Saturday night, I think it was, 160,000 kilometres per hour was the speed that was reported in the papers, of course. And I don't think anybody knows exactly what it was, but most likely, as you say there, it was a meteorite. And with regard to the first part of your comment, you are right, sometimes I can get a little bit fussy and call people out for their spelling mistakes and bad grammar. And I must admit that some of the spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes mistakes that are left on this channel in the comment section are absolutely shocking. And sometimes I struggle to work out what the comment is actually trying to say. I imagine it's because people are typing quickly. I imagine it's because people are not checking what they have written. Because if it isn't for those two reasons, then some people who leave comments on this channel have serious issues when it comes to expressing themselves in written form in the English language. And that's a shame. One here from Harry. On the subject of click titles, you are one of the most moderate in your selection of episode titles. I specifically avoid sites that post sensational titles. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Harry, thanks for the comment and good to see that you don't consider the titles of my videos to clickbaity. Some people have criticized me over the journey saying that my titles are very clickbaity, but I've realized that those people have no idea what clickbait is. One here from user, being in Australia, I rarely get to listen live 
as it's in the middle of the night here, but enjoy your presentations. Practicing Spanish in Both Alta in Ballarat is muy difícil. Your user, thanks for the comment, and I understand that it is difficult for people in Australia, in Victoria, for example, to follow the live streams given the time difference. When I start the live streams here at around 7.30 p.m., it's around 4 or 5 a.m. down there in some parts of Australia. But, of course, the good news is that you can always watch a recorded version of the live stream whenever you want. And when it comes to practicing the Spanish language in the town that you mentioned there, Ballarat, in country Victoria, I imagine that it is not the easiest place in the world to learn Spanish. Probably not many Spanish speakers around that part of Victoria. I could be wrong. But the good news is that nowadays with the internet, you can connect to people from all over the world at any time of the day. So keep at it and keep trying to improve to Espanol. One here from Mr. Vet. Mille is a joke. He won't fix Jack in Argentina. The economy there has been in shambles for decades. The only thing he will accomplish is to get voted out in the next election. Yeah, Mr. Vet, thanks for the comment and obviously not a fan of the Argentine president, Mr. Javier Millet. And let's be honest, people are divided when it comes to this gentleman, Mr. Javier Millet, as they are with some other politicians, for example, presidential candidates in the United States. And you're right, the economy in that country, Argentina, is a complete shambles and many people are questioning whether Mr. Malay is the person to be able to fix it. He thinks that he will be able to get the Argentinian economy back on track, however difficult that may be, but as I always say, time will tell. One here from Chris, good thing about Benidorm is that if drinking louts are there, they are not where I would rather be. Like Denia, for example, I love the history and culture of Spain, not drinking myself stupid and sitting by the pool all day. Yeah, Chris, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to an article that we saw the other day about how Benidorm has been named the most dangerous city in the world when it comes to scams. And let's be honest, Benidorm is not everyone's cup of tea. The people that love Benidorm absolutely love Benidorm and the people that hate Benidorm hate the place with a vengeance. But unfortunately for some people, Spain is only a place where the sun shines and alcohol is cheap and they like to spend all day sitting by the pool drinking themselves into a stupor. But anyone who knows Spain well and has travelled around the country will know that there is a lot more on offer in this country than places like Benidorm or Magaluf. And the final one here from Peter, maybe that fireball in the sky was Javier Millet arriving from Argentina. Yeah, Peter, thanks for the comment, and maybe you were right that that fireball that was spotted above Spain and Portugal on Saturday night could have been Mr. Millet. And Mr. Millet's impact during the short stay that he was here certainly was a scorching one. His words, as we saw earlier in today's video, have created a diplomatic crisis between both Spain and Argentina. And I will say that Mr. Millet, like other similar politicians, sure knows how to create a headline. But one thing is almost certain when it comes to Spain and Javier Millet, and it is that he won't be welcomed back into this country in an official capacity, I don't think, as long as Pedro Pedro Sanchez is in government. But hey, that's just my opinion, and I could be wrong. On that note, I'm going to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.